Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Score Points. In the previous videos, we have learned about pre-fertilization, fertilization. In this video, we're going to learn about post-fertilization from the chapter Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. The events that takes place after double fertilization, it's collectively called as post-fertilization events. There are four main events that you have to learn. First is PEN or the primary endosperm nucleus. It is developing into endosperm. Zygote developing into embryo, ovule it develops into seed and ovary develops into the fruit. The first step in post fertilization event that you have to learn it's the endosperm development. PEN or the primary endosperm nucleus will develop into endosperm by successive nuclear division to give rise to free nuclei. And this stage of endosperm development, it's termed as pre-nuclear endosperm. We have learned about the endosperm development. It's of two types, free nuclear endosperm development and the other one, it is cellular endosperm development. The coconut water from tender coconut that you're familiar with, it's an example for free nuclear endosperm. And the white kernel of the coconut, it is the cellular endosperm. The PEN undergoes successive nuclear division and it gives rise to free nuclei. This stage of endosperm development is called as free nuclear endosperm. Then the cell wall is formed and the endosperm now becomes cellular. The division is followed by cytokinesis and thus the endosperm becomes cellular. It is now called as cellular endosperm. Second step of post fertilization it's the embryo development. Embryo it develops from the zygote. We have learned that it develops from the zygote at the micropyla end of the embryo sac. Now we can see the diagram of embryo development, different stages of developing pro embryo, globular, heart shaped embryo and mature embryo. First the zygote develops into a globular embryo. And again you can see the diagram of heart shaped and finally it becomes a mature embryo. Zygote divides by mitotic division. It's very important by mitotic division to form pro-embryo. Zygote divides mitotically to form pro-embryo. We have learned about the different stages of developing pro-embryo. Now let's see the embryo in dicot. It has a large basal and a small apical cell. We can see the diagram of the large basal cell. And the small apical cell these will again divide and it will form a globular embryo fest and then heart shaped and finally it can form a mature embryo now we can learn about the suspensor the large basal cell it will enlarge and will undergo transverse division to form six to ten cells called as suspensor large basal cell it will enlarge and undergo division to form 6 to 10 cells called a suspensor. Now you can see the diagram of suspensor cells. Now let's learn about the structure of dicot embryo. It consists of the following parts epicotyle, hypocotyle, plumule, radical. Epicotyle, it is a portion above the level of cotyledon. Hypocotyle, it is a portion below the level of cotyledon. And plumule, it is a future shoot. Radical is a future root. Radical is usually protected by root cap. It's covered by root cap. Radical is covered by root cap, which is also called as calyptra. It can provide protection. You can see the diagram. You can observe the plumule, radical and the root cap. Now let's learn about seed. Seed consists of seed coat which is for protection it also has cotyledon which is a reserve food material and embryonal axis seed coat is generally for protection there are two types outer integument it's testa and inner integument it is tegmen cotyledon it is the reserve food material it provides nourishment there are two types uh, monocots and dicot based on the cotyledon we have learned about cotyledon. It is a reserve food material. It provides nourishment for the developing embryo. There are two types of cotyledon, monocot and dicot. 
monochord has one cotyledon dicot it means it has two cotyledon the term mono it means one cotyledon and di it means it has two cotyledon monochords examples are grass and banana for dicot examples are mango and apple there are two types of seeds based on the endosperm presence one is the non albuminous and the other one is the albuminous seeds the seed with no residual endosperm is called as non albuminous seeds example pea and groundnut in albuminous seeds the seeds with residual endosperm these are albuminous example wheat maize examples for non albuminous seeds are we have pea and groundnut for albuminous we have wheat and maize pea groundnut beans etc are said to be non albuminous because the endosperm it may either be completely consumed by the developing embryo before the seed maturation now let's learn the advantages of seeds seed is a fertilized ovule it is a product of sexual reproduction first advantage a seed helps in dispersal and it forms a new colony by this dispersal property next is seed is a reserve food material it provide nourishment for the growth of seedling then hard coat which is present for seed helps in protection that is testa and tegmen it is a covering since seed it is the product of sexual reproduction it can lead to genetic recombination and hence lead to different varieties that is variation seed can be stored to be consumed throughout the year to overcome drought and natural calamities although seeds in general are product of fertilization there are some special mechanism of reproduction in seeds apomixis and polyembryony let's learn about them in detail apomixis is defined as the phenomenon of asexual reproduction that imitates sexual reproduction it is a phenomenon of asexual reproduction that imitates sexual reproduction it is by the formation of seed without fertilization important point here is that seed is formed without fertilization other special mechanism of reproduction that you have to learn is polyembryony it is the occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed this is called as polyembryony example is orange orange is having more than one embryo in a seed we have learned that ovary develops to fruit ovary matures to form fruit and the ovarian wall develops into the wall of the fruit called as pericarp that is ovary develops to fruit and ovarian wall develops to fruit wall now let's learn about the two types of fruits one it's the true fruit and the other one it's the false fruit fruits that develop only from ovary is called as a true fruit example pea wheat maize etc fruit that develop from the ovary and the thalamus or other parts of the flower is called as false fruit example apple strawberry etc true fruit some examples are pea wheat and for false fruit strawberry and apple are common examples we have learned about true fruits and false fruits now let's learn about parthenocarpic fruit fruits that are formed without fertilization is termed as parthenocarpic fruit they do not have seeds these fruits they do not have seeds example banana so banana it doesn't have seeds 